What's up, everybody? Mr. John Van says, do I need a webcam because I broke my PC today? No, you do not need a webcam, folks. We have a very special session planned for you today. You can't miss it. Cannot miss it, all right? Andy, welcome to the house. Denny, John Bishop, Stan, Ron, Walter, Mr. Zoom user. Let's see, we got one person on the phone. 956... No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to give out your number, but shout out to the person who's listening on his phone uh, from who knows where, right? So big shout out, folks. We will be starting here in about seven minutes or so. We have a packed session. Again, you don't want to miss this. We're going to show you how we were able to make bank today in the live room and how we're, we're planning on doing that tomorrow. A whole lot of other things. Make sure you're here when we start. We'll see you in a few, everybody. Couple shout outs here as well. For all the folks on the YouTube chat, Abraham, welcome here, my friend. Zoom Balloon, what's going on? Fun Sun Motors, Lee from Pennsylvania. Zoom, we're gonna go over SPY, we're gonna go over SPX. We will be going over Qs, the entire market. Again, make sure you're here in five minutes. We're gonna get this thing rolling. We'll see you guys here in a few.
All right, all right. Everybody here, welcome to the session. My name is Rodrigo. I'm going to be here with you today with Nick Shaheen. For those that you don't know me, my name is Rodrigo. For those that do, welcome back. Good to see you again here. I'm really excited for yet another session here that we're going to have with Nick Shaheen. We do have some really cool things going on this week that all of you are going to want to stay tuned in for the special as we will discuss it later in the session, all right? Uh, and we will go over Nick's trading room, all that stuff. It, as it is right now, we're just waiting for Nick Shaheen to come out of the live trading room. He's there Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. So Nick has been doing his thing here with us at Benzinga for over 10 years. He's consistently killing it for all of our subscribers and even those of us that work here that have been taking advantage of his recommendations, including myself today, being able to make some money with, with, Nick, with Nick in the live room. So this week, as usual, we will be going over a lot of the information that's inside the inner circle for Nick's private members. We will be giving you a sneak peek into the magic and how it does happen. There are a couple shout outs here that we do have to give out. Of course, Praveen from Texas, John Van from New York, Marcel from Canada. All right, we have a couple folks here from different parts of the world. Lee from Pennsylvania, Fun Motors. So folks, again, we will be covering a lot of uh, topics today, right? So as you engage in the chat, make sure that you're asking questions. Nick will be reviewing it. This today, again, is a sneak peek of the live room. In the chat, if you've been here, if you've never been here before, right? If you're in the chat right now, you've never been here before, put a one in the chat. If you've been here before already, put a two in the chat, okay? In the meantime, let's go ahead and bring on the man of the hour here, Mr. Nick Shaheen. I believe he's in the back somewhere. Yes, yes. All I right. Am, I am you here. I am here. You always get the best intros. Like oh, this yeah. is du Mac, like WWE intro quality here, yeah. okay? Sunday, 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 be there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we have a ton of people. All right, guys. And the more that you guys participate as far as the chat room, you know, like putting if you're here for the first time or not, just participating in general, the better the session will be because this session is for everybody that's watching, right? You basically. So Nick, uh, how's your day going there? I know you've, you've been pretty tight in the chat room. So this is this was a, a pretty bad day from an operational perspective. It was a great day from a trading perspective. Um, I had an emergency errand to run, but the, so I left in the middle part of the uh, chat session, the live session, but I left the, the room in good hands and they, I left instructions before I dropped everything and re ran out of here. I said I would buy calls here on, on the concept that the options suggested a rally back towards 4,000 in the SVX before the close and I left. And then I looked at my phone when I got to where I, I needed to be, it was unavoidable, boom. Um, I have snapshots of what people just, I, when I came back, I was like, I hope somebody took those, um, uh, the calls at 398, they, Mary pops in, I did, and she closed at 100%. So the, the calls cost 57 cents when I mentioned them. I think they were over $2 when the day ended, wherever the SPY went. Uh, right. So that was a good day. Somebody else chunked, jumped in um so they they doubled their money as well there was somebody new that i couldn't get a snapshot it was like their first or second day and they loved what mm -hmm. they saw and they did the very well they were up 100 percent. so yeah today was challenging for me because i was running around mm -hmm. and uh the room profited i even had time to write up a trade for slower traders that are not mm -hmm. in the live room I um I shared a trade. Somebody said, okay, I need something. I'm working. I don't have time to mess around with it. I need something that I can set and check on every once in a while. I shared in details with two tickers. I said, you can do it with this ticker like this, uh, with that ticker like that. And it has three weeks on the clock. So right. and, and we've got a little bit of everything. If you wanted to trade fast, we crushed it today. And if you if you don't know how to trade fast, like me, you like to trade very slowly, <clears throat> then you also have the opportunity to make some money. Nick, let's just clarify for the folks. When you mean slow trades, you mean for people that maybe have a full-time job. That yes, that's exactly what trading. I mean. Like I have a full-time job by being in a room all day. I can't trade for myself very fast. I take trades here and there, but I tend to take the trades I write up in details mm -hmm. because that's the stuff that I can I can handle well, speed. Th there are people in the chat room that trade 
actively. It depends because if you work from home three days a week, or if you only trade two days of the week during important Fed meetings, during earnings, during the volatility chase. So um, now yeah. here's the here's the thing. In the chat room today, Nick, uh, people were able to make money both ways. Uh, maybe you can explain what that means when you buy puts. Yeah, they, and they crushed it. Calls. First of all, sorry about the jacket. I literally just ran in the door. I got back from my running. So, um, so here's what I mean. This week, we have had volatility, right? And if you listen to the news, I'm sure they'll tell you why the volatility was there. Everybody was glued to see what the GDP number was. I promise you, I don't have a clue what it said because it is not important. I promise you. So what, what did Nick say? I'll explain in a minute. So what we do in a room is trying to lay out the plan on how to trade regardless of speed. You can't trade up or down without knowing what the hell is going on. So on Sunday nights, I usually do homework for the team. And this week was short in the U.S., so it was Monday night because the U.S. was closed. And uh, so the, I have a strategy. It's four minutes, maybe six minutes. The video tells it. This is the goal for the SPX this week. Anything else doesn't matter. And if we accomplish this goal, we'll have another goal for next week. So now I know what to expect for the week. So if we're up 2%, down 2%, I don't care if I know we're headed towards the goal. And uh, then you take trades and you manage your risk. The trades you take depend on the speed you're, you're at. So two, three days ago, I said two days ago on the dip when we had a down 2% day, my plan was before the market opened, I had shared my plan before the market opened. So the members, even if you have a job, before the market opens, if you have five minutes, you pop into the live room and you, you read my plan for the day with lines and numbers. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm looking to do this. I'm looking to do that. So <clears throat> that day I said, I'm looking to buy the dip, whatever it comes, whenever it comes, I'm going to use the SPY. I said for short-term trades. I said for longer-term trades, I'm still looking to buy stocks that fall on earnings if I disagree with the reason they're falling. So basically fundamental. And uh, then every day I have one or two candidates. I have like six right now. I shared the tickers, but I haven't shared trades in them because I wanted to see where the market is going. So going into the day, they knew my plan. And then at the end of the day or middle of the day, I'll share my plan and I'll share a trade. So today, before I got out of here, I said, I gave them a blurb of what's going on. And I said, I think we will bounce. But I also said, here's a trade that doesn't really matter what happens. You're going to win either way. So coming into today, to answer your question, um, I, was, I was lined up long. And I entered those calls two days ago or three days ago on the dip. And I said, on every rally, I'm going to book profits. And I did. And I kept updating and I kept updating. So today we opened up. Everybody was happy, happy, happy overnight. And then uh, we fell apart. And, oh, my God, somebody said whatever. I said, OK, they said it right at the head and shoulders level. Perfect. How, how does it know? And then went down to here. I said, well, if I it got to here, I said, I would try longs. And it fell to here. I said, I wouldn't get out of my longs. And if I don't have longs, I will get longs. And that was a day trade. So if you were long going into today, you had the opportunity to book profits in the morning. If you were bearish at the top of the day, you made money. I sold calls at the open, which means I shorted the market at the open against my longs. So I am long. So I sold against my longs short term because of the charts. And then when we fell into the lows of the day today, I sent the instructions that I would hold calls. If I'm holding calls and I didn't stop out yet, that's not where I would get out. I would want to see the rally back. And then when I left, I said, book profits. I don't know where you want it. What the heck was that? What, what happened here? A, a gap in the middle of the day this big? What? What the heck? Oh, wait. That, that's bizarre. Anyway, uh, I, I wasn't glued to, to, to the price action. So though I came back to see that people made money off of those. Meanwhile, before I left, let me show you the picture. If you are an active trader, I shared an iron condor that totally worked and you didn't even need to be in the room. This orange line, <clears throat> this orange box delivered 22% on yield today. Uh, so if I invested 500, I made 22% on whatever risk I took on it. If I did one contract, I made a hundred bucks out of thin air. If I did 10 contracts, I made a thousand bucks out of thin air. So 
And, and when it got to here, I said, I wouldn't close it. It's still too early. I still see a lot of upside pressure from the options. And boom, we nailed the close within like $6. And I had two, two people in the room also help me with the close. So if you were a slow trader, you got a trade from me that's on two tickers. If you're a medium trader, you got an iron condor from me, which is that I do these every day, um, that delivered 20% to 25%. If you were a fast trader, you got a call entry from me here that ended up paying you big time. So this is for just if you have time to be in the live room. If you don't, that went out to the slow traders that are not in the live room. So everybody got the chance to read this. If you just pop into the chat room once a day and see what Nick is trading today. Um, and um, so it, it is not like, if you can't be in the live room, you're missing out. You're not, you're missing out on fun, but you're not paying right. for that. That's <laughs> extra. I give you eight to nine hours a day. It's actually more. I kid you not. I was talking at 5.15 this morning, my time. So I was at the computer. Somebody said, um, is Nick talking? I was like, it's like four o'clock here. So it's pretty, <laughs> pretty early in the day when I get started. Um, but right. I'm here. So before the market opened, I said, is anybody in trouble? Does anybody need help with their tickers before the day starts? A couple of people took me up on my offer. So, so that was pretty happy to see. Some of them yeah. are even in here. Like, like Doc, There's a ton uh, of members here. Yeah, so I don't know what you guys are doing here. You haven't had enough? <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So, so here, I, we, did, we, we did a quick poll here, right? Just for the people that are watching, right? So um, I'll share the results with you there. So what's most important to you as a trader? Most people said cash flow. I know that you have some really finessed cash flow strategies, including the Iron Condor. Maybe you can explain it a little bit for the people that don't know what it is because you yeah, make one I, a day. Iron Condor, I just mentioned, that's the 25% here. I don't, I'll share exactly the one I mentioned. When the market opened today, they said, what do you do? I said, I don't know the action yet. The market just opened. What I would do is I would do something that needs nothing to win. And I said, I would sell a lottery ticket for somebody that's super hopeful and sell a lottery ticket for somebody super pessimistic. What does that mean? So if you're looking at the screen, um, I'll mark it up. This part right here was the, this is called a, a bear call spread, credit call spread. It's that orange box. That's the top of the orange box. I basically collected 50 cents, 50 bucks from somebody that says, we're going to go to the moon. I said, I think you're wrong. Give me $50. They gave me $50. Now, on the other side, somebody was saying, oh, we're going to go to hell. So I sold them a losing lottery ticket as well. Uh, they were almost right. <laughs> Um, which is a credit put spread, also called a bull put spread. So basically, an iron condor is a trade that doesn't care what the price action does as long as it stays away from the edges I perceive as limits for today. So at the open, look right here, delta-based iron condor. That means it's an iron condor based on the options table, no charts. I do not need the chart to trade this trade. I can do it any day, every day, all day. I don't need charts. And it says at 6.42 a.m., which is 12 minutes after the open today, the SPX was at 4.018. I said, I bet you we go nowhere today. Well, I said, I bet you we close in the middle. Uh, we went all the way down and I said, I wouldn't cash out yet. And then we went back up and we closed somewhere in the middle. So this ended up winning 100%. What does that mean? The person that bought a lottery ticket from me here and here, they both lost. I kept their 50 bucks. I kept 50 from this guy and 50 from that girl. And I ended up with $100. That's 25% reward on my risk. What do I mean? I only risked $5 up here. I only risked $5 down here. But I didn't really. I can't lose on both ends. Either of them, if one wins, the other one doesn't. So if I lose, it's only on one side. So my total risk is $5 regardless. But I collected both 50s. So I can only lose four. That's 25%. So the equivalent would be for you to have bought a $400 call and made 25% value with it. And mine has an 85% certainty. Yours does not have any certainty. You're at the mercy of the price action. So 
this is a good way of just creating income without any um, price, without any um, having to babysit. Now, this isn't this bet ends today, and I can repeat another one tomorrow. Some people can't be there. That's why I offered this one. This one is three weeks out. So I set this one on. Uh, why do I have this one today? Because we had one expire this week that was three weeks ago. And before that, we had one that expired the week before that. That was three weeks before that. So if you keep one going every two weeks or every three weeks or every week, then this is passive income. You don't have to pick a stock. Oh, is Apple going from point A to point B? Who cares as long as the index stays between this and that? And you can do these trades in any ticker. The reason I like SPX, I'm going to give you another lesson. So pay attention. The reason I like the SPX versus the SPY. Uh, here's a term you're going to hear if you do options. This one is cash settled. So first of all, the SPX is the index. Everything else copies it. The SPY uh, is an ETF that tracks the SPX. That's the cash index. So this is cash settled. What does that mean? You can't buy it. You can buy this like you buy a stock. This one, you can't buy it. So there's no assignment. You, you can't wake up one day and you're assigned a position. With this one, you can. With this one, you can. So when the bell rings, the look at the scoreboard. Okay, so we closed at 4016. I don't know where we closed. Uh, okay, my bet was at 4018 and I was short. I won. That's it. I keep my money. If I lose, they'll say, okay, you collected $1.00. You now owe us $2, therefore you lost $1, and they'll do the math in the, in the account. There's no assignment. So SPX, if, you, if your platform does not do the SPX, I highly encourage you to switch platforms because I love it because of that. And also, if you can't do the SPX, there's a baby SPX called XSP. X-Ray Sierra Papa. This is 10 times smaller. Um, it is also cash settled. It is not as liquid, so it's a little wonky with the quotes, and but it's also not available unless you have the SPX. Platforms that don't have the SPX also don't have the XSP. SPY, everybody has it. All right. So uh, Delta, Delta, Delta is no. The Delta is the odds of success. So if I have a Delta of 0.15, I can roundly say I have a 15% chance of price being there. So theta is time, delta is the change of the value of the option based on a $1 change in the underlying. So listen to their definition and listen to mine. I told you their definition. You sound, you heard it? The change in the, in the cost of the option um, relative to the $1 change in the underlying, right? Pretty simple, right? No. How about mine? Oh, delta is, hold on, odds. It's your odds of success. <laughs> Let me explain. All right. Who wants, who wants a lesson? Who wants a lesson? Let's go. This is an E-Trade practice platform. Do not get it. I'm not recommending it. All right. So we're looking at Unity. Why? Because somebody just asked me, oh, I'm, 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 I'm in trouble with Unity. They asked me for some input. So I was trying to find some covered calls they can sell against their loans. Um, so let's use it. So the, um, the, this is an options chain and what what are options let's start there they're contracts so contracts have terms and conditions and the, the terms are many let's focus on the important ones first of all the letter u that's unity second of all 22 days on the clock time so this is march 17th option i just randomly picked it okay price that's the price column right there and, um, you know, this side, they're calls, this side, they're puts. Neither is bullish or bearish. They're both bullish or bo both bearish. Depends on what you do with them. All right. So we mentioned the word delta. Here's the delta column. There are two of them, one for the puts and one for the calls. So that's the puts. That's the calls. Ignore the minus sign. That's from the definition. All right. So check it out. This is where price is right now. Where is it? Uh, $31.80. Let's round it. It's $32. So price is right here right now. So look at the delta, 0.5. Look at the delta, 0.5. Which means what? It's a coin flip, 50-50. And the, and, and the further up I go price, away from current price, look at my odds, they drop, right? And look here, the further down I go, my, my odds drop as well. That's a little bizarre. 
Oh, these are five dollars. That's why. Okay, so what does this say? Let's work it. Let's let's define the delta. How does that work? This number here, this number says what? It's a tiny number, right? It's not even 0.05. It's 0 0.02. So it's 5%, 0 0.05, 5%, 5 not even, less. So this says, literally, there is very little, that's a little number, very little chance that Unity will be at this price in 22 days. That's what this thing says. Let's say it again. There is very little, that's a tiny number, chance that what? Unity will be at $20 in 22 days. That's how you read an options table. So that's why it's seven cents. There is a almost a 50-50 chance that Unity will be here in 22 days. That's why it's $2.48. You see the difference? And if I go here, the odds accelerate, which means what? They don't expect a big rally. So the opposite side, uh, the, the logic works the same way on the calls on the opposite side. So that's a clear, a quick lesson on options. So that's what the delta is. The delta is your right. odds maker. Forget about the definition from Wall Street. You don't need it. If you understand what I just said, wow, a square a green, that's too bad. Well, it's good if you're long. But everybody was crying, oh, my God, they're down 6%. I said, great, we'll go long tomorrow. But looks like they, yeah, they bounced right back. Somebody said, anybody know why Square is falling? Who cares? Just decide whether it's a good entry point for you. Why? Let me, let me tell you this. Forget the why. You're not going to make money asking yourself why, why, why. Do your homework, make your own opinions, and forget about, about the other people's opinions. Um, and if you don't know, come in the live room and somebody will help you. I kid you not today in the room. I'm so blessed to have that room. Everybody's pitching in yesterday. Everybody's pitching in the day before yesterday. When, when we fell 2%, everybody was pitching in. We had people looking everywhere. Um, I'm starting to check and, um, a couple of people, new members come in. David specifically said, you should, uh, you should check this piece of software, um and so i'm like called book map and i said like, okay i'll check it out so i reached out to the company and they opened the account to me so i'm testing it and it's all the buzz everybody's talking about it it's not for everybody it's pretty freaking expensive and it's really not going to help you it's not a trade alert but it helps you if you're an active trader so if you're in how in here out here the point is as a collective we're getting stronger and stronger and stronger if you're trading alone you're gonna get beat if you're trading in groups, and if the group is honest and nice and good, your losses are going to shrink. Your opportunity to make mistake, that's the better way to say it. The opportunities to make mistake, if I'm trading with a group of people watching out for me, are going to shrink. It's hard. We don't make easy mistakes. We don't make easy mistakes. So um, let's see here. I did homework at five in the morning today for the group. And what I did is I went through some tickers of mine and I classified them. Uh, first of all, I had something pop up here. That's homework I've done months ago. And I said to myself, okay, maybe it's time to go long markets because I had these comments from a month ago. The price was here for this ticker. Forget what it is. I said, it might go to here. And if it does, stocks are going to be struggling. And then today I had an alert like this one that fired off. Because it's the alert said maybe it start uh, maybe start longs for a swing trade opportunity and that's the arrow I want to happen and then if this happens in this stock we might be even breaking out in the stock market so we cover all angles we have yield curve coverage and I went in details as to what these four means CNBC tells you one yield curve this one the tens to twos you will hear what's his name say tens to twos. Right. I made really important distinctions between these four this week. Super important. OK, so this morning, here's how stupid this market is. This morning, the stock market fell out of bed and interest rates were collapsing. Two days ago, when we fell 2 percent, CNBC and all of those guys came out. The headlines were uh, stocks fall in fear of rate hikes. Rates were skyrocketing today. Stock market's falling. What did they say? Interest rates are falling because they were. So go figure. 
Yeah, they don't know. They don't know what it is, so they take whatever headline there is and they stick it with whatever scoreboard there is and they put it out there. So how do you fix that? I'll tell you how. You reach to your TV and you, remote and you shut it off. They're not going to help you trade. I promise you, they're not going to help you trade. So here are my setups. I'm eyeing a few gold things. I'm looking at GoPro for a, a snap uh, trade and phase. I'm waiting. It's not time. E EXPE, same. Disney, three people asked me about it today. I said, I would wait. I did offer a trade, but I said, I wouldn't take it. I'm short two stocks that are paying really well. I was short two other stocks that I closed and paid real well. Um, so today, banks were the ones that fell us off the cliff. XLF and XLV. So if you look at the one minute, the drop was a lot of banks. And XLV also, I noticed. Okay, and uh, I and these are the ones I'm looking to catch: Etsy, Shopify, Chewy, XBI, uh, Netflix. Although my least favorite, I did share a full trade today from Netflix for Netflix, and I said it's not for me, um, and I warned people on it. I said, okay, so Netflix is in an ascending channel, and I drew this red one for somebody like a week ago. I said it's better on a dip. So they were loading up on calls here. I said I wouldn't buy it on a dip, and look at what it did. So today somebody said, can we go long? I said, sure, you do this guy, similar to this guy, a little bit lower. And it pays, I don't know, 14, 17%, 17%. .17%. Um, <clears throat> then I said, but you have to be aware that this path is possible. And that's why I structured it this way. I structured it lower. This was old. And uh, the reason being is like, even if this happens, I'm still okay. PayPal, I love, but I don't I wanted uh, the reaction in Square to get out of the way because they trade kind of together. Abbott Labs is it falling in support territory. I would get long, but I don't know much about it. I asked two or three people. They didn't know what to say. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll wait one more day. Roblox, R Rivian, I'm already long. And uh, this, I went long this week. BP, I shorted the hell out of it. And it paid, paid, paid. AXP. AXP was a huge win. Rig was a win. GE is a win, but it's closed for most people. Affirm was an easy win. Speaking of wins, these are the trades, <clears throat> uh, scoreboards. So red, a green, green, a green, green, green. I don't know what this is. NVIDIA, green. I don't know why it's still open. It should be closed. Green, 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 green. And green, 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 green. These are logged. Uh, this is not my website. This is Benzinga. Um, this, this is one group for the ultimates. This is for the enhanced greens, red, green. Lucid, everybody loves up. that color, right? Green, green is my favorite color. Nick. Yeah, Lucid did work. I was just early in my trade. Lucid had that spike. I understand it's down today. I I forecasted it. Remember when Tesla fell out of bed because they cut prices? I said that's a dip I would buy because Tesla cuts prices to kill competition, not because it needs sales. Okay, right. so uh, who cut prices? Netflix is cutting prices to get subscribership because it's in deep shit. Tesla was cutting prices to get other companies in deep shit. And it did. What did Lucid say today? They downgraded their outlook, right? And um, th their, their, the Tesla entry price is phenomenal for EVs. I can't even buy a Bolt for the price of a Model 3 in California or a Model Y. A tiny shoebox called Bolt from GM. I swear to God, this is as big as a shoebox. Um, and I could buy a Tesla instead. So I'm not a fan of Tesla, but trust me, that when they cut prices. Hey, uh, Nick, um, th there's a few people here. So John and Sada. So John says, I'm going to be honest. I don't understand this, but I'm listening. Listening. Hopefully it will click. Sada says this definitely isn't for beginners. Okay. So, I, I, yeah, I got it. Jonathan, John. Or the other beginner person. Give me a ticker. You're trading now. And I'll walk you through it. Louise, give me a ticker. You're trading now. Either you're trading or looking to trade. And this would be what happened. <laughs> no, I asked two people specifically. No, Bernardo, I need, a, I need a brand new person. Don't be shy about it. Somebody beginner, a beginner, give me. Somebody who thinks this is over their head. Wait, John, John. I'm not doing options. Forget options. Stocks. Whatever you're doing. Tell me what you're doing. Stocks. I'm not a one-trick pony. 
<laughs> I'm addressing the new person. Louise, Oxy, there you go. Oxy, are you doing stocks, Louise, or no? Where did you go? Are you buying stocks and selling stocks or are you doing options, Louise? Options. Oh, there you go. So I'm going to address it from both sides. So here's a person that says a beginner it's over her head. So listen to this, Louise and John. Um, so Oxy, if you know me and Oxy, I don't like Oxy. And and um, the the problem with it is people are following it for the wrong reason. So if you're a stock person, I would have stopped you from buying Oxy from here on up. So I wouldn't have nailed the top, but I would have told you, do not touch it. In fact, uh, that was my answer. If you're a trader, you can get in and out. If you're an investor and following Warren Buffett into buying Oxy, I think you're making a huge mistake. And you're going to be stuck in it for years. Um, so hopefully I stop people from that. So Oxy, I wouldn't touch it. Not even down here. There's a chance Oxy would be below $50 this year. It's not a guarantee. Now, Luis, if you like to invest in Oxy and you want to go long Oxy here, you're not making an obvious mistake. Uh, it's falling into support. So from that perspective, you can say last time it was here, it had a bounce, 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 bounce. So you can say, OK, this is definite support. I'm buying a stock into support. So for that perspective, I would caution you that the bounce is not going to be that big. It's going to be maybe the here or here, and then you're going to face resistance. Why? That's me saying stuff about charts. OK, so I think they're going to try to sell the rally. Now, if it bounces, exit. And if it falls back, you can decide to enter again. But see how it behaves around the 50%. So from here to here, and if it falls back down, see how it behaves halfway. If it doesn't stop halfway, they're going to back they're going to go back to where you bought it and then lose it. So then you can buy it again here and get the second bounce and repeat. At some point, they'll find footing, but maybe this is not it. So that's that will be my comments. You can do that with stocks. You can do that with calls. You can do that with sold puts. You can do that with whatever you want. This is, as a beginner, first things first. Is this a good entry point? It's not bad. Uh, because why it this was a, a good entry point prior so is this a good investment i wouldn't go all in i would take maybe 30 percent. what does that mean if you usually buy 100 shares you buy 30 if you buy if you if you spend usually a thousand dollars on a trade and options you do 300 or 400 tops uh, so partial position if you get a quick rally i would exit and um watch out for a possible re-entry see what happens here if they lose from where they bounce then expect 56 or 55 enter again and see if you can do this so this is an a trading comment versus an investing if you're buying it for an investment definitely take just 30 percent and see how it behaves and then i don't know three months down the line if it gets cut down to 45 and you still want to be in it then you can double down but really not doubling down. You're just going in for a full-size position. I did that uh, several times. So that's the Oxy way. Um, as to how to trade it in options, I can go into that. But Mr. John, if you were just trading stocks, I would tell you you're okay to buy the stock provided you understand what I just said about the price action. As an investment, it's okay to nibble. As a trade, you go right. along with a hard stop, meaning if it goes against you, you set a level of pain. Okay, if I lose 20% of my money, I'm out. This was a trade, not an investment. I'm not married to it. Uh, so you see that? Okay. Now, look at this. This looks like a head and shoulders. Does it not? So is it shortable? Yes. Look at the size of this. This could be below 50 in the next three to six months. If I'm going to say it right here right now. If Oxy doesn't recover 64 and then makes a higher high than 64. So let's say it gets to here and it comes down to here and it doesn't come back above the here. I think it's going here uh, and it's shortable. So what do I do? The next time it comes up, I would buy a put or short the stock responsibly. I'm not condoning shorting stocks outright. So I'm gonna put an alert for myself. Uh, short, question mark, start of 
daily head and shoulders on uh, okay if so then it's going to tumble that's observation you heard the part where i said if right so if it gets to 64 and comes down it doesn't recover 64 and above then it's tired it's going to go finish the job all right so options let's say i want to put this plan in options um when if i wanted to short it actually let me rephrase it if i wanted to go long it like louise then i will go to oxy and now everything here is for oxy this has 22 days on the clock let's say louise is okay with that time frame then louise will go out to 60 and uh, buy is a 50 60 dollar call so louise will buy one contract if she wanted two three four so the cost is 200 bucks what does that mean now you own an asset that um, has value it's a contract the contract assures you that you can buy the shares at 60 for the next 24 days regardless of where the price is so if in 10 days oxy is at 70 you're guaranteed somebody must deliver shares at 60. so all you have to do is just exercise your right boom you will have 60 dollars shares in your account minus your 200 dollars fee okay so what if nothing happens and you change your mind you change your mind you just sell the call so if you own the call and you change your mind you don't want to buy shares you just sell it you buy it to open you sell it to close so let's say you buy it to open price spikes that 200 dollars turns into three four five six hundred dollars you say the hell with the shares i just want to sell it so you buy it for 200 when you go to sell it it's then 400 now you doubled your money if it's 300 you made 50 percent. sorry three dollars <laughs> you made 50 percent. so you can trade the option without actually delivering uh, shares so you don't need to own shares to do anything on this page if you buy a call you're in control if you buy a put you're in control once you sell something you're at the mercy of somebody so if you're a beginner just look to buy and sell but make sure to make it your goal to do spreads which means you need to be able to sell some stuff too I'm a net seller. I don't like to buy anything. You want to buy a put? I'll sell it to you. Okay? That, that's what I'm looking to do. So uh, right. in Oxy, if I wanted to short Oxy responsibly, what do I do? If I say in the next three months, Oxy is going to fall hard. I go out to April. That's 57 days on the clock. I'll buy a put uh, right here, right now. I'll, I'll buy a put at 55. I'll pay $200 for it. So my order will be $200. Now I am short Oxy, but that's the only money I could lose, $200. Oxy can go to the moon. I only lose $200. Traditional shorting of stocks is, CVS is on my list. Tradition, the traditional way is to short a stock is you borrow stock. Hey, Bill, you have 100 shares of Oxy. You want to lend them to me? Bill will give me his shares. I go out and sell them. I collect the $59. And then Oxy falls, I buy it back for 55, I made profits. Um, let's say Oxy skyrockets like AM and like, like GME, and then I have to return Bill his 100 shares, and now they're 70. Ooh. And I'm losing for as long as the stock is ri rising. That's why you get the short squeezes. Everybody wants to outbid themselves. The other person buying begets buying. So this is a responsible way to short a stock. Just buy put. And if the stock price falls, the put will be 300, will be 400, 500, 700, 900. Depends on how fast. If it falls to 45, that put will quadruple. And how do I book my profit? Just sell the put. You can buy it to open, sell it to close. That's it. So that's puts and calls. And that's right. how I would put how I would put the oxy play in place. Personally, if you ask me how I would trade it, I just answered it. I put an alert to go buy a put when it gets there. Nick, really quick here. We're getting a lot of questions here about the live room. So I'm just going to address a couple of things here. Then we'll get back here into the session, uh, which has been great as well, folks. I definitely want to give a big shout out um, to all you guys. Let me, uh, let me pull these up here, Nick, one moment. So a lot of you have been following us and in recent weeks, you've probably noticed that we did a like a few good offers, right? For all the people that are watching, as always, there's a sort of method to the madness here at Benzinga and 
we wanted to get as many of you into the inner circle as possible before we started raising our prices. So it does hurt me to say that we have actually increased the price of the chat room to $22.97 for the year moving forward. So for any of you that did not get a chance to take advantage of any of the great deals, packages that we ran over the few week, past few weeks, uh, sorry to bring the bad news, but prices uh, are increasing. So however, for tonight, for tonight, we will be allowing anybody that signs up here with us to have one last chance, one last opportunity at the 1997 price point before it's effectively gone. So keep in mind that this is your last call, right? This is pretty strict. They were pretty straightforward with this last call before the lights turn on and we're back at 2297 in the morning. So we will touch on that later in the session. But for now, I do have to address some of these questions about the chat room. Are the sessions on Sunday recorded? Yes, they are recorded and they are posted in the chat room. It's from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. Eastern on Sundays. Nick reviews about 150 stocks that you guys pick. Member requested tickers. He reviews all of them back to back. That video is posted that same Sunday so that you can get a head start on the week. And yes, it is recorded. Um, next question, does Nick provide education or is it just trades? So hmm. Nick Shaheen loves education. He uh, is Mr. Education, if you will. He was with Benzinga here for 11 years. He started the options thing. He's literally helped tens of thousands of traders, including myself, not just improve in trading, but learn. That's the most important part. Good question. Uh, Michael, are there any chat room notifications? Yeah, so uh, the blue chat room, the static chat room, I don't know if Nick can show it there. That one's open 24 seven and it does have push notifications for, and the trades that are posted there are for the people that have maybe a full-time job or are trading passively, right? Via credit put spread, iron condo or covered calls. Those are not fast, fast trades. The fast trades are in the live session, which is open from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m., where Nick is sharing his screen webinar style, just like you're seeing right now. So th those are the notifications that you have. Uh, do you teach strategies on how to make the different types of trades? Uh, Michael, good question. Nick does have actually a getting started kit uh, with videos that show you everything you know, what is a call? What is a put? What's a spread? What's a covered call? Risk management, how to book, a, how to book profits how to set a stop loss, really important things, right? So those are all going to be available. And again, you have the ongoing mentorship, ongoing coaching with Nick the entire day. We're talking like 60, 70 hours a week. And that's FaceTime. That's FaceTime, right? There's also homework time outside of those hours so that Nick can actually create the trades and actually create the videos to send you guys with the education and all that stuff. So uh, folks, just to recap, I will be posting Lamont. I'll be posting the link to join on the chat, right? But it's very important, folks, for everybody to know that what you're getting, right? You're getting 20 email trade alerts per month, 20 email trade alerts per month from Nick Shaheen. You get the live trading room, which is open 24-7. You get the live session where Nick is live Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Eastern. You get the Sunday session, 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. Eastern. and private coaching, private mentorship, private guidance, hand-holding to the max. This is not just hand-holding. Nick is literally tucking you into bed and, and giving you breakfast. So for everybody that's new, which I get a feeling there's a lot of people that are new, I'm telling you, you want to start the right way. Don't start winging it, blowing up your account. From experience, I'm telling but, you that's not going to work out, right, Nick? Yeah, let me, let me address that from that. So somebody says, um, April? Apricals, I don't know. Let's call you April. You say you bought calls with CVS, CVS calls with Chris Capri. Um, are you making money on that call? I'm asking for a specific reason because somebody in my room came and said, uh, how about CVS? I typed up the answer. Losing money on the CVS. Okay. So somebody says that. Okay. So my answer on the CVS would, was, not would have been, was because somebody did ask me. This was my answer live in the room several times. And I put it on my list today because it is tradable. 
So I said, I can go long CVS, but not by buying a call because it is uh, easier to for me to say, okay, it has support, but I don't know if it's going to rally. And then I made comments on the chart itself. It looks like for a year, they're, uh, they're selling rallies. And it looks like we are at this stage here somewhere right there. Uh, it had a bounce, a higher bounce, and now it's deciding what to do with this one. It had a bounce and a higher bounce, and it's now deciding to go long or not. Okay, so that's why I mentioned that. That's why I prefer to sell rather than buy. So if you bought a call, uh, the calls are losing premium. If I sell a put or a put spread, I don't need a rally to win. Let's let's make the distinction. This this will give you a big picture. We'll do we'll do tickers in a little bit. Let's do concepts first. It sounds like we have a few beginners. So what does uh, let's say you decide someone comes to me and says, "You know what? I want to buy shares in CVS." I'll ask, "Is this a swing trade? Like do you want them for 6 months, uh, for 30 days? I would like to make some money in the next 3 or 4 weeks." Okay. So of course you can buy shares and with shares time is not a problem as long as you enter at an area where it's logical then time is not an issue so in that case i would say you know what there's no reason to go long here like specific oh i see this let's do that so i would say okay how much do you usually trade oh i usually put five thousand in the stock trade i said okay how about you only put three start with three and see what happens and they said, no, 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 I, I want to do five. I was like, okay, if you don't want to do partial, that's fine. I recommend partial. Then take five, but do me a favor. Give me a number. Like how much are you willing to lose out of that 5,000 before you call it quits? Okay. And they'll say a number. I'll say, okay, write that number down. And every day you hold yourself accountable to that number. This way, if it goes like here, I mean, where do you get out? Where? Because if you lose this one, that thing is going for a ride. But it's not going to happen like this. It will happen like this, come back to here and come back down. Let's say it rallies. Then you tell them, that's your stop loss, the number they picked. Okay, how much money do you want out of it? 10%, 15%? Ooh, I'll be happy with 15%. Okay, write that number down. So now they have an entry. And it's not perfect, but it's okay. And they insist on go taking it. I would say don't do it. Uh, and they have an exit strategy if things go badly, exit strategy if things go well. Now, that is a professional trader right there. As opposed to like, oh, this looks like a good place. Boom, order. You go full in. And then it takes another tumble. Damn it, I'm going to double my order. Boom. Before you know it, it's 20% of your portfolio. What happened? You turned a swing trade for three weeks into a giant loss for your entire portfolio. It takes you a year to recover from it. That is winging it. That's the difference between a pro and, and an amateur. Now, Nick, how I would do it, how I would do it with options, two ways. Okay. So you can go buy shares or you can go buy options or sell options. I'm going to give you both. Instead of buying shares, I'll tell you, okay, you're going to spend $5,000. How about you spend a fraction of that um, and, and just uh, spend $500 on a couple of calls. And this way, the they, um, the out out of pocket expense is literally five hundred and twenty dollars or something. So what does that mean? That gives you the opportunity to buy two hundred shares if you want to. But more importantly, if the stock rallies like you think it will, that two hundred and sixty that two dollars and sixty cents could be six hundred, could be eight hundred, which means you have two of those. You will make that much money. Uh, let's pick it. Pick it. Uh, look for example, this stock today is down 04 percent. The people who played options could have made 20% or lost 20%. So the bang for the buck is huge in options. Uh, I don't like to do that because why? I just told you, I don't see a reason it's going to turn around right here, right now. I don't have a tangible trigger for it technically. So how would I do it? I would look at the fundamentals. I will say, you know what? I don't mind owning shares. This looks like okay over the long term. Nothing exciting. But if I own shares... It's not the end of the world. So what I would do, I would go out there. It's like, okay, you said you wanted to buy calls. You said you wanted to buy shares. I don't want any of that. But what do I want? I want to make money off of whatever. So what I would do is I would go out and sell a put. But nobody should sell a put. And this is not an investment advice. I want to make 80 bucks as long as CVS is above 80 bucks. That's what it is. 
For this one, I am selling something. So look, look at the order. Estimated credit I receive. No money leaves my account. I'm on the hook for buying shares. That's it at $80. Where's $80? There. So the worst case scenario for me in that trade is I wake up one day, I own CVS at 80. I start losing at 79.2. That's the worst case scenario. CVS would have to go this. And if I wake up, I, I only lost from here to here. Right, Nick, really quick here. Um, a couple of things that questions that we're getting. A Paracles is the 1997 for the year. Yes. So folks, if you do click on the link that we posted, the checkout will say that the price for the year is 6,000. That's the regular price. The only way, and this is pretty much how it is. The only way to get the 1997 for the year is to call the number we're posting in the chat or send an email because at midnight, it's not going to be there. Gene Fritz says, since joining Nick's chat room, I'm able to stay calmer and make better decisions. The market was down today to a level Nick had called, and I thought it would rally from there. I bought a couple options and made 55% today. Rather than panicking, it did just what I expected based you know on why? Nick's predictions. We used data. There were no emotions. Everybody was running. Why? 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 Who's speaking? Who gives a shit? Let them speak. Okay. So do you trust the fact that the market makers in Wall Street rigged the game? Yes. Then use that information. The game is rigged. Okay. They sway prices however they want to make money. Use that information to make money. I looked at the options chain today for the SPY when the SPY was at the lows of the day. And I said, we have tremendous upside pressure and I would expect a rally back. And it rallied back exactly to where I thought it would rally back. Once in a while, that doesn't work. but if you know what you're doing, and in our room, we have at least a dozen people that can do as good a job as I do. No one just as good, but they all learn from me, so they do a great job. And we all come within dollars of each other. If you can call the close every day, it is a freaking gold mine for options traders every day. And it's a gold mine for how to manage risk every day. If you have a position in trouble that day and you come to me and say, what do you see for the sticker? I'll tell you exactly what I see for the ticker. More often than not, it works out well because we're not using emotions. I'm a fiery guy. I'm super aggressive in real life, like super aggressive. Everything I do is high adrenaline. I fight for a sport. I race cars. It's always been like exciting stuff. When it comes to this stuff, I am chicken. I don't do anything without triple confirmation from data, from charts, if I can from any angle. One angle I don't touch. Anybody guess what angle I don't touch? What you should cut out of your life. Yes, Gene, thank you. News, cut the news out of your, your investment life. Listen to the news if your life is in danger. But if you're looking at news in order to trade, you're by definition less than mediocre because you're chasing headlines that have gone through the chain of command to finally get to that poor editor that gets paid the lowest in that news agency to push it out. So you're like last in line. You should tell a live vision. I like that. You should just do your own homework. If you don't know how, I'm offering you my homework every day. I give you a full page with lines, numbers, and charts, and words. Very simple, plain, simple English. Let me see if I can find you one uh, from this week and you will see how plain, simple English it was. I'm going to tell you. So the write-up, say, from um, a couple of days ago. When did we have a bad day? Okay. So this is from the bad day, I believe. I'm going to bring it here. Two days ago. I'm going to bring it here. One second. Okay. So this is before the market opens. You guys will have that delivered. Um, however, you, you get your news either in the chat room, just by reading it. So uh, watch last night's video. That was, a, so I guess, the day after the, the Monday, the off day. I said the headlines are amped up, old topics. So try to control your emotions. Watch the small caps. And then said, machines are buying dips at support. They will, um, they will have that chance this week. That was before the week started. 
before the week started, those were my comments on Tuesday morning before the market opened. We charted the S&P path perfectly. And if you clicked on that one, you saw the old chart and how it played out perfectly. We knew this was possible. So it's not headlines bringing it. And I had orange arrows, one arrow, two arrow, three arrow. I said, I'm optimistic, but these are possible scenarios for this week. And then I said, my strategy today, longer swings, continue to find bargain dips on support. This is stuff I share. Like, oh, okay, um, Etsy reported and it's falling. Let me see if I can go along Etsy and here's why and how. Uh, I said, shorter term trades, I'm looking for longs into dips. And we dipped. And by the end of the day, I had taken my longs and shared them. Uh, and I said, I don't add longs if I'm already suffering. If I already have longs and I see more bargains, I don't add because I don't know anything new. So this is the difference between a home gamer retail winging it and somebody who has a plan. Who's going to win in a match? Somebody that practices and preps or somebody that just shows up in his shoes and, and, and flip, I mean, flip flops and pants? No, somebody who, who practices. So a man with a plan. And then I give you levels on the SPY. With pictures, these are clickable pictures. So you will have charts, you will have levels at least to help guide you. And now these levels I'm adding, I'm adding with data from Bookmap, which is actual orders sitting to execute uh, on, on limit orders, just waiting to execute. So right. that's a guaranteed support and resistance. So we're trying to get as smart as we can from all angles using every tool we have. Nick, we ran a quick poll here. Maybe you can address uh, some of these folks here. Basically, um, the poll was, did you make any money trading today, right? So 42% said yes, 36% said no, and 22% they're learning still. So how, how would you address um, everyone here? Those 42% were already members, right? Members of the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> how would I address it? Uh, so today, both sides of the fence had uh, the opportunity to make money. So if you were a bear, you had the opportunity to make money. If you're a bull, you had the opportunity to make and lose money. And um, so what I can tell you, what I said earlier, I can't guarantee you profits because I don't know how good you are at listening to instructions. I can guarantee you fewer, easier, fewer easy mistakes. In other words, I bet you most people, even the ones that are losing now, um, are not bad stock pickers. They would say, FML, I got in here, I got out here. As soon as I got out, that thing took off like a rocket. So maybe it's a little bit of bad luck. Maybe it's um, maybe we can solve that with a little bit uh, with a little bit of good skills. Uh, for example, I'm going to share this. Somebody on Unity, Unity just reported, and and here's <laughs> here's what happened with Unity. So I read the tea leaves in Unity before the report came out. I look at the options volume. And I guess which way it's going to go. And this was my comment on Unity. Hold on. Let me see if we can go into it here. So I basically swayed anybody away from buying it. I said it has upside pressure to 40, 39 and 40 and a half. I said, I can't see it going past 40 and a half or 41 or something like that. Uh, let's see. It has upside pressure towards 39-ish, but not much room to run past 40 and a half. And look what happened. Boink just above 40 and turned around and lost its lunch. Okay. So the person jumped in and traded after hours. And uh, here's the end result. They said that they're stuck in a stock at $37. So this is a lesson for you, by the way. You said, does Nick teach? Drop your pencils and listen, because I'm giving you a lesson on how to get out of a jam. Um, so they are long at 37 and uh, let's say they had a thousand shares. It's more, but let's say they had a thousand shares. So he said, what can I do? Should I do this? Should I do that? And the paragraph of what he should do was this long and I'm ADHD, I can't focus. So I kind of skimmed it and I know, okay, what he's asking. So here's what I would do. First things first, let's get some lessons. And the lessons were easy for me to, to tell in hindsight. And I, I made sure to tell him, it's like, oh my God, you're an idiot. Why didn't you do that? No, that wasn't it. It was for things I do. Maybe you do already, but let me mention them anyway. So the things I would do is I wouldn't go in because he. I know he averaged into down. He bought it at some point. I think he was short and then he flipped uh, long and it started turning around and then he started adding to his longs. 
and he didn't ended up with a, mo- a lot more shares than he wanted to. So if he wanted a thousand shares and he bought all thousand at once, and then he bought it at 37 and it turned around and fell to 31, I would not add. I don't know any professional trader that's worth his or her weight that would add to a losing position if they went full bore at once. So if your allotment was a th- was a thousand shares, in hindsight, don't do it again. Uh, don't add or take 500 and add 500 when it falls. So average into a full size position. Don't average down from a full size position to a double. You just made your problem bigger. That doesn't make sense at all. Okay, so that's for starters. Second of all, have a stop loss because he says the position is now like 20% of his account. This would stop you from having a 20% uh, account position. It's very dangerous to have one position with with that much uh, in it because if it goes sour, then what do you do, right? Uh, so but the, the idea is from here, what do I do? So I'm stuck with the stock at 32 and I'm in at 37. So I then I shared covered calls. So um, <laughs> so the, the one, one thing on Unity, what I could do on Unity, if I was stuck at 37, I want to sell covered calls. Let's introduce what covered calls are, okay? So let's say I own 100 shares of Unity or Apple or Google or Netflix or Tesla, whatever. And you own this thing and you just want to make money off of it. So how about you create your own dividends? What? You can do that? Yes. They call it a covered call. Uh, So if you own shares, you can sell covered calls against your shares. Why? You remember the definition of a call? To buy a call means you just reserve the price. And if you decide to buy those shares, you send out an order, give me the shares I reserved at $40 or at $45. So then you take the shares at 45, assuming it's at 60 or whatever. But if I sold the $45 call, then I can collect money now for the promise of giving my shares away at 45. That's what it means for me to sell that call. Never sell a naked call. Never sell a naked call, especially not in a stock like this. Never in your life let anybody you know sell a naked call in this environment. They can they can get ruined, not like lose an account. They can get ruined to hell. So... Uh, selling a covered call, there's no risk other than I have to sell my shares. That's it. So if I bought them at 37 and they forced me to sell them at 45, I made eight bucks and an extra 60 cents on top of it. So I made 8.6. So there's no problem with that. That's a responsible way of getting rid of your shares and buying yourself some downside protection. So I offered him two, three ways of doing that. Not this leg exactly, but another leg where um, he would sell a 36 call for two weeks out and he would be just called away at break even. So the goal when you have a trade go badly, your goal is no longer to make money. Your goal is to come back to zero, right? A whole, like no loss. Okay, so it's synthetic naked put. Mm, what? <laughs> uh, what? No. So anyway. Uh, a naked put is you can buy a put or you can sell a put one leg. Then it becomes a naked put and you don't own shares. <clears throat> but that's how you do get to own shares. All right. Speaking of making money off of other people's hopes, um, I've, I've shared this example a couple of times, but I think it's fun and it's educational. Remember when Tesla, remember back in the day, like, I don't know, seven days ago, maybe <laughs> joking, uh, feels like it when Tesla was falling out of bed. And it fell into 102.2 or 102.4. That was the low. Somewhere in here, when it fell under 130, uh, a gentleman came into my live room and he said, uh, Nick, how about uh, I'm going to short Tesla. I would like to buy a May um, May $60 put, $60 put in Tesla. And I, I immediately did not even think about it. I said, I will sell you that put. And I immediately went and sold the put for $60. So let me go through what that meant. Somewhere here, I don't remember exactly when. I want to say in the 130s. Somewhere here. Here. Uh, They came into the room. They said, I want to sell a $60 May put. That one, 60 May. Uh, They wanted to buy it. Big shout out here to Michael, the newest family member. He just joined us here in the show. 
hey michael welcome to the group um so they wanted to buy that put i said i will sell it to you what does that mean so i took 350 dollars for it for somebody that wanted to buy it and uh, i sold another one for march for 240 dollars why why less money because shorter time two months shorter so i collected almost 600 dollars per contract because somebody was too late and too enthusiastic thinking Tesla is going to do this. What's my risk? My risk is I may own Tesla shares at 660 and I would have broken even at 5650. That's a risk I will take any day. And uh, so somebody was freaked out. I said, I got you. Here's your insurance policy. I'll take your shares at 60. Don't worry. And they paid me 600 bucks for it. Uh, so um, that is what I would do for a living if I had enough money and I knew how to do homework and I knew charts. The homework is I know the fundamentals of Tesla. They are phenomenal. And what what did he just say? Yeah, if you still think Tesla is an embarrassment as a PNL, you ought to revisit it with not somebody else's opinion. Okay. This is not the same company as when it was when, when, what year was that? When he was in trouble with the SEC and the smoking um, on, on Joe Rogan show or whatever. That's not the same company. Anyway, so if you do homework on, say, NVIDIA and NVIDIA falls, then you know where to take the risk on NVIDIA. And that goes to any company you know. I don't do this stuff with Unity because I don't want to buy Unity. Uh, I don't do this stuff with GME because I think it's going out of business. I don't do this stuff with AMC because I think it's going out of business. I do this stuff with hardcore cash machines like Tesla. Tesla generates more um, margin from after uh, cost of goods sold. So basically sales and gross, um, mar gross profits. That's the one line item right under sales. So if you were a restaurant, that would be food cost and bar cost that number so it doesn't have like how big a building you have what's rent what's labor no just the stuff you produce and uh, the the number for tesla in absolute dollars is bigger than gm and ford was with less than half the sales maybe now half the sales so that's pretty impressive that's a, that's why they can cut prices and crush everybody everybody else loses on their evs i don't know of one car manufacturer that makes money from selling evs tesla is the only big one that i know of so gm is losing money ford's losing money uh, most likely a vw clan is losing money which includes audi um, i don't know about china what that's about nikola <laughs> <laughs> don't they need to sell something first <laughs> yeah i can't believe that people are still like always get alerts on that stuff like why is that still even trading that that right there why is that trading because there's in there's a there's a buyer for everything <laughs> that's crazy so and we Nick, do so it, this year i mean the 2022 was it 2022 it was a crazy year because you had all these you know you had a lot of this um froth right in the market so as a new trader if you come in on 2020 everything's going up you feel like a warren buffett yeah. And then reality kicks in and now people are trying to come look you, for help after. Right? Yeah, you had you had to go out of your way to lose money in 2020 and 2021 until uh, the holidays. And then in the holidays, they said, okay, the gravy train is over. The cops showed up at the door. This rave is over. So here's the scenario, folks. Listen to this. Listen to this. All right. I'm going to give you the quick skinny on Nick's view on the world where we're at. And I'm going to tell you why you should first, I'm going to start by telling you why you shouldn't uh, listen to the news. Like today, do not tell me. I don't know what the GDP was. What, Nick, you're not interested? The GDP is not going to tell me anything I don't know. The GDP is not going to make pay, uh, Powell change his mind one way or another. Neither is the PCE tomorrow morning, nor was the CPI the other day. What is What is happening? Okay. We have inflation. We're going to have inflation for a very long time. You can't pour trillions of dollars into the economy and go, what happened? What, what happened? Why do we have inflation? And you can't expect it to go away. So the inflation is here to stay. When my shopping bill drops considerably, then I'll look at the CPI to see what it says. But until then, I know there's inflation. 
the CPI plus 0.1, minus 0.1, higher or lower than expected, doesn't matter. Powell, that's another fact. Powell is raising rates uh, until he decides to stop. And he said he's not stopping for a very long time, for much higher than what he expected. Why do we keep expecting anything other than that? So me waiting for the Fed minutes is as stupid a, a thing to do as I've ever seen in, the, in my life. What did we learn from the minutes? Nothing, because you know why? They happened three weeks ago. They met. They told us the outcome. They told us their decision. They answered questions live. And then they subsequently had, I don't know, 50 speeches, including this week, two today, 50 speeches. So what what have we not learned from the minutes? Who takes mustard on their on their, and bacon uh, on their turkey sandwiches? I mean, what, what, what was missing? What was missing? Oh, we learned from the minutes. You didn't learn shit from the minutes. The minutes did not tell you anything you didn't know before that. So stop pouring over these minutes. Stop pouring over the PCE, CPI. It's not going to change. Okay, so what are we looking at? Let's look charts. Let's look logic. Think logic. And I'll tell you why I'm a little bit concerned now. Okay, this was COVID. This was the reaction. This was the recovery, which was pretty bizarre. I couldn't believe we went back to real life and we're still closed the whole world. And then the free money started falling. And then we did this. And then for a year, we fell. So let's say this is stock ABC. It doesn't matter what this is. For a year, we had a descending channel of selling rallies. Rally sold, rally sold, rally sold, rally sold, rally sold, right? Rally sold. Oh, something changed. Did you catch it? So we've been in a descending channel of lower lows and lower highs. This is the only rally that stopped halfway and didn't make a new low. So, and then we had a rally that breached a breakout. This is a full-on breakout. The way to confirm a breakout in stock ABC, forget what this is, is to come back halfway of the halfway, thereabouts, and then take out where you failed from. You would officially have exited the descending channel. So how did that happen? Let's look at it from a daily perspective. By the way, this is a weekly chart. So this is, you know, five years worth of data. If I go to a daily chart, it'll show me one year worth of data. That's the same chart, same ticker, same company. Forget that it's the S&P. Okay, so again, the descending channel for a year. We spent months and months consolidating since last year. So we had the June crash. The most violent crash I've ever seen in my life. Yes, the most violent crash I've ever seen in my life. This was uh, harsher, but not as violent. The October crash. We had a rally. We came back. We bounced halfway. But guess what? We came back. Oh, my God. No. New low. Then we bounced. We had this. We had that. Boom. Halfway. Bounced. So right here is right here. Look what happened. That's the change right here. Boink. Beat that. That's a breakout. That's an inverse head and shoulders that targets this. You have to confirm it. You go above it. You close above it. You have a downturn. You bounce. And if, if, if you beat this point, I guarantee you this. Okay. So you have to beat this point. <laughs> so... This is the story that nobody talks about. And if you get to hear, listen to this one, you means you killed this one, that one has a higher target. Now, what I'm saying, a chart to bottom, they will have a descending channel, like you said, for a year from the pandemic. And then you spend months going sideways, consolidating. And then suddenly you have higher lows, and higher highs, that's not confirmed yet. We only have had one dip, two dips, three dips, four dips. And that's the one that Where does it stop? And if it takes this out, rinse and repeat, suddenly you have an ascending channel. And the bears will be in real trouble. And they don't even know it. They haven't noticed that we flipped from selling rallies to buying dips. So when you hear algo, the algo is the algorithm that tells the machine to do. And it has rules of engagement. And they have hierarchy. Most likely, I'm not a coder, but if I were, I know how to code. I have coded before. So if I if I were to code something, I would give it the biggest box, the biggest module, okay? And that is 
what mode are we in? Bullish or bearish? So are we buying dips or selling rips? Or are we sideways? So this will, everything else is below that. So this is, uh, we are in buy the dip mode for this period of time. That's why I'm saying the bears could be in trouble if they don't come up with something new to cause this. If they cause this, hunker down. The S&P could be like 3,200, 2,800, whatever. But I don't think that that's on, on the docket with this set of circumstances. I think we need a new, new variable, not headline, a new type of headline, something that we haven't seen. Like um, whatever his name is, pick a Fed head. Fed head says we need a 2% rate hike. <laughs> That's a new kind of headline? No, it's the same headline, regurgitated. So, uh, all right, so I'm losing energy. Give me a ticker. Let's do tickers. You guys were talking about tickers. Let's let's simulate a day in the live room. Hit me. Intel, I can answer it without looking. Adobe, Tesla. UUP, oh, I'm interested in UUP. Boyle, I can answer it without looking. Carvana, avoid. Shopify, go long. Uh, Pfizer, avoid. Tech, short. BAC, short. NVIDIA, don't chase. Square, long if it dips. If it doesn't dip, you missed it. UNG, same as Boyle. You can buy it with tight stop. Exxon, short sh short rally. Spalantir, I'm long. Meta, I haven't looked at. Starbucks, I haven't looked at. Uh, AGN, I haven't looked at. XLE, short rallies. <laughs> <laughs> How did I do? Yeah, How guys, give it, give it up there, Nick Shaheen, rolling it hard. And we went through <laughs> all of them. I mean, these people could go on for days. Gold, gold, you mean gold the metal or gold um, barrack? I'm looking to go along a, uh, a gold GLD. It's still too soon. You can nibble, but depends on how you trade, Matthew. If you sell put spreads and buy call spreads, maybe. Uh, barrack gold, it's interesting, but it's tied to gold to a degree, GLD. So... I mean, they're intriguing. They're on my list. You can see them. Agnico is here. Uh, uh, go, th this is Barrick Gold. This is Agnico. So, for example, well-managed companies. But f the problem is their P&L depends solely on the price of the thing they sell, and they can't control that. So I'm afraid that if it does bounce, this is potentially possible. So I would only go long this stock by selling something here, like a put or put spread, um, so I don't need the rally. And if it drops, I still have room to win. See, any oil company, I would short pops without question. A Goldman Sachs was on my short list. Beyond Meat, I wouldn't touch it. I can't stand the management. They, are, they had a gold mine and they wasted it. The pandemic was like, I couldn't understand it. So people were saying, oh, they have an advantage. Like, how is it? Well, all the meat factories are closed. I was like, how is their factory not closed? No, no, they had it on the shelves. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? What? So uh, Beyond Meat has meat to sell because they have it on a shelf and the stock went to the moon because of it. <laughs> I, I couldn't understand it. <laughs> so, and then the CEO said, Oh, we're focusing on retail because the restaurants closed. I was like, great. And then the restaurants reopened and I don't hear that story anymore. So let me tell you the objective. If Beyond Meat breaks away from 22, you can get to 26. Did it report today? It's up 14. So where is it at? Oh, it's already here. Yeah. So let's talk about Beyond Meat. Here, it is not an obvious entry point. So if you were looking to get long Beyond Meat, you missed it. Uh, get long on a dip into 18 or 17. That would be the no opinion, no feelings. I don't care what it is. This chart is not a long into that. Above that, maybe, or below that. Um, upstart, I'm long. CrowdStrike, I thought I caught, caught the fan. Twitter is no longer public. What are you asking about? <laughs> Intel, Intel, avoid. I used to say Intel is brilliant and a bargain. The last report from the management told me, basically management said, yeah, we suck and we have no idea what to do. Even though they're huge, they are bigger than AMD and NVIDIA put together twice over. 
but they cut the dividend and I think there's a long shot scenario that Intel is a teenager. Um, a firm, I, I bought the dip on earnings for the group. It's probably here. It is here, I promise. Oh, that's page two. Um, it was an easy win is what I'm saying. There it is. It was an easy win. Affirm. This is a company that's misunderstood. I used to own a business similar to it, and I know it's a cash cow. So when it fell on earnings, I was like, I'll take it. And we made uh, money out of thin air. People panicked. And we said, I got you. Here you go. Here's your losing lottery ticket. Had bad financials? No. I think they had bad expectations. Here's the thing. Listen, if you want a joke, just read all the headlines on earnings. Is there one headline on earnings that doesn't say missed or beat earnings? The first thing, missed or beat earnings. Now, you should ask yourself, why do they measure all stock performances, all companies the same way? <laughs> a company that's growing super fast is losing money in order to grow super fast. Why would you judge them on profitability? You should say missed or beat sales and forget the forecast part, sales actuals. So you will see a company that grew in sales. I remember Upstart fell 65% on a, on a report where they tripled the size of the company. The company tripled and somebody freaked out about how many loans were holding on their books. 65%. Okay. That I bought and doubled and I didn't get out. So I'm stuck red in it. But it was a small position. So, um, yeah, the headlines on earnings are terrible. A firm was a good catch. I have no doubt in my mind. I will do it again. Google is too low, Neil. I'm long Google and struggling. I'm not outright lost yet. I still have a week uh, to sa save that trade. But I think it's a bargain. For example, when Microsoft rallied on the back of Google's falling on stupid AI headlines, I thought was, okay, if I'm long Microsoft, I would book my profits and roll into a Google investment. Google is a cash cow. I don't always look for gap fill. Uh, here's the thing about gaps. You have to understand the nuances of gaps, okay? It's a longer conversation, um, Jaime. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Spotify, I haven't looked at in a while, so you got me there. I'll check Spotify. Somebody's asking about snow. They were nice. They didn't put it in caps or anything. So I'll talk about Snow. Uh, Snow, I don't understand the business. Is this the one that uh, Warren Buffett invested in? Is this the one that Warren Buffett invested in? If so, then I will use his smarts to say that, okay, they don't have a fundamental problem. Uh, Snow, on a daily basis, is in the middle of a range. So there's no reason to get long. But if I do get long, I'm okay. Wait. Earnings are coming. Forget that. I have a perfect trade for snow. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Please let me have it. There it is. Here's what you do. Okay, we got tails. We got heads. We got tails. You got two tails and a head. So you flip your own coin and take it for the earnings. The reaction to the earnings has to do with human emotions. So it's not about the credit report or, or the earnings report. So the, way, the only way I can explain it is by looking at Apple. So we all know that Apple is a pristine company, right? Excellent P&L, excellent balance sheet. I don't think so, but it's an excellent balance sheet nonetheless. Um, so I can't even tell you when was the last time Apple delivered a bad earnings report. Can we all agree? Can anyone remember a bad earnings report from Apple? No. So why isn't every reaction to the earnings up? This one's down. This one's up. This one's up. This one's down. This one's up and down. This one's nothing. This one's nothing. This one's down. This one's down. Why aren't they all up? 
if it's about quality. It's not. It's about expectations. I'm going to tell you something. So I don't know how long you've been trading. Remember Google before it split? It was like $880. And Sergey came back to lead the company. And he his first quarterback when he was doing the earnings, Google fell $100, I think. You know why? Because there were only 137 words in his speech. No shit. That's why they sold the company. 137 words. So he didn't say enough. They sold it. Turns out the guy had throat something. He had a problem with his throat, some sort of a disease. So go figure. It's, it's all about human emotions. So I would avoid it into earnings. Snow. Spotify. I've not looked at Spotify in a while. Definitely not. Uh, okay. If you're long Spotify, if you're if you're buying Spotify here, uh, okay. So I don't know your time frame. I think you will have better entry points, but I see I see the enticement. A breakout from one twenty nine, one thirty has a lot of upside to go, but that's a. I, I think I have easier trades. I don't like to buy a stock going into a prior fail. But here's what you do. If, you, if it fails a little bit, here's what's potentially doable here. If it holds this zone, like the SPX, and takes this out, you have a huge upside potential. So you, need, you want them to draw a right shoulder to this quasi-inverse head and shoulder bullish target. I bet you you will get this much out of it. 104. So about, I want to say, 14 to 18, maybe $19 of upside from here. But that's not for me. I would rather sell puts into a drop, Spotify. I don't know their fundamentals, so do your homework. Shopify, I would be along here. Depends on how you trade, though. Okay, running out of breath here. Um, I have like two more tickers and then I'm done. Right, SoFi, right. so SoFi, I'm looking for re-entries. I, I went long for the group on SoFi and we crushed it. I'm looking for a re-entry. Um, I also went long Beto, which is crypto. You guys should get involved in crypto. BAC would be a short for me, Carla. Definitely not a long on BAC. I had all banks for a short, and today would have crushed it. I shorted AXP for the group. We made a ton on that one. Uh, we bought a $400 put. It turned into $750, something like that. So it was an insane uh, win. Um, I could have shorted JP Morgan. Uh, oh, Morgan Stanley would be a short. So Bank of America from memory is not a long. How about that? Well, now it's better. Okay, so when I looked at it, it was up here. So look at this. So it went from here to here and then it gave back half. It's not a short. Depends on your time frame and how do you trade? Are you looking to buy shares or are you looking to buy calls? Carla. Right. Uh, really quick here, Nick. So before before we do closing remarks and everything, uh, you know, big thank you to you. I just quickly want to go over here the offer that we have for everybody before uh, before we let you go here, Nick. So earlier, like I said, we've increased the price of Nick's inner circle from 1997 to 2297 moving forward. But as a good faith offering to our loyal uh, viewers here and followers of the webinars and everything, Nick and I wanted to make sure that we gave you at least one last chance to get in tonight. So at midnight, the price will be changing to $22.97. That's something that the team has already progr programmed in. Not much that I can really do there, but we were able to work out having the marketed team hold on on changing everything until midnight so that you guys could get in. So from this point till midnight, Everybody that calls in to me to sign up over the phone, you will get the 1997 price point. If you do wait until tomorrow or next week, unfortunately, you will be paying the 2297. So don't wait for this. You'll notice on the checkout, there's no discount applied. It comes out to like 6,000, but that's why you have to call in to get the 1997. So Nick, um, with this deal here for everybody out there, it's a, obviously the last time they'll have it. Um, what are some closing remarks? Uh, so that we can kind of get this rolling here. Once you uh, head out, because I know you have some some work to do for the chat rooms, I will show them a few videos from the from the room so that they can get a sense of it. Okay, so so here's the thing. Um, Carla wants to buy a put 
And this is a lesson for everybody. If you want to buy a put short a stock or go long a stock, don't buy it on a tick in that direction. For example, Carla wants to buy a put, so short Bank of America. I see why. I would use a pop to buy a put. It's going to run into resistance because when you buy a put on the way up, you're paying much cheaper prices. So then the opportunity is for you not to nail it, but then you'd be short already when it's already turning. And if it loses where it bounces from, I think it go below 33. And that works the other way around. If you're looking to buy a call here on a breakup from here, don't buy a call on the way down. Uh, you will pay much less so you can ride it up again. All right, so that is it. Um, as far as um, don't trade with emotions. If you don't know how, join us. I promise you, listen to this. I'm going to give you a guarantee. It's not, not like I can give you, Benzinga is not my company, so I can't give you money back. So um, what it is, I guarantee you, you're going to be a better trader in my room. I guarantee it. There is no way you're not going to improve in my room. There are too many people. This week, we had 375 people, uh, consistently over 340. So you're going to, you're welcome, Carla. You're going to have better skills out of my room. I guarantee it. Okay. So I say that with extreme confidence. I've been doing this too long. I'm not the best trader out there. I promise I'm not. I have people that are better than me in my room. I'm pretty freaking good all around. I'm excellent in charts and I read options like nobody's business. And I have all these other tools that I, that I pay for or some of them are sponsoring me. So I can look at behind the scenes of other things so you can benefit from that as well. Um, just join. Like somebody wants to do coin and Mara, forget it. Just trade crypto. If you're trading coin, you're trading Bitcoin. Why do you want to take on the probability of issues with the company itself? trade crypto. And the way to trade crypto safely is to use something like Beto. Beto is Bitcoin prices, but it's in your Schwab account or Fidelity account. It doesn't need to happen on a crypto account. So I'm crushing it in my crypto account, but I have no idea if I'm going to have my money when I need it because that's the risk. Where do you put your money? It's not an American company. Uh, it's crypto.com. It's not the best. I can't tell you they won't go out of business like FTX. So I hope they don't. So even though my trades are bulletproof, I have no idea if I will have my money. <clears throat> uh, document this. I know you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So yeah, Tasty Trade um, and, and PayPal, you, you can buy crypto there, but it's wonky prices. But if you don't trade a lot, then uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's one way to do it. Okay. I'm out of here. Oh, by the way, I didn't show you. Uh, this is the chat room. And we also have some uh, getting started uh, series of videos. What's a call? What's a put? What's a spread? And uh, the uh, Sunday sessions, we, we do 150. This last Sunday was 145 tickers. The trade setups are shared in here every day when I, whenever they happen. Trade comments here, questions for me here, direct messages, yes. Direct messages in the live room, yes. This is the chat room. The live room is something completely different. It's it's all bonus. Uh, just join the gang. All right, peace out. I'm out of here. All right, Nick Shaheen, uh, big thank you there for always being here with the members. And of thank course, you. We have, to, uh, we have to make it official here. Hold up one moment. Yes, no. All right. There we go. All right, Mr. Nick Shaheen. You're welcome. You You're welcome. I'll see you in the room. Just join. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. Right. Okay, Nick. Absolutely, man. Thanks a lot. Even losing his voice there. He's been pretty much all day with the members. But for everybody that did uh, email Mr. Carlos, Thomas, Ekelon, uh, Patrick, a couple of you folks here that sent an email, uh, I will be reaching out after the session, folks. But Basically, for all the people that joined, I do want to show you here really quick the live room, right, so that you know and show you a little bit of the videos from Nick. But the Carlos, you're welcome. Document this. Hey, Nick, got a lot of clarification from your lessons here. You're the best. Your knowledge is power. Good stuff there. Um, good stuff there. All right. Nice. Good to see that. So let me show you here how the chat room works, right? You will get push notifications from this chat room. 
This is proprietary to Benzinga. This is not a Discord chat. This is built in-house with our developers. Right now you do see here that 86, that's on the chat room with Nick, but right here at the top, there's 113 active users there, right? That are actually watching there right now. So you will get the push notifications on this chat room. And to join the live session, you have to click here, right? This is a conference call, basically like a Zoom. It does have a password there that you can use to join and it will be changing. So just make sure you keep an eye out on that. Let's go ahead and put on some of these videos here so that you can get a sense of the material that Nick is posting here. Hey traders, Nick here on Monday night. Yesterday, the US markets were closed. The overnight sessions are, sessions are okay. Uh, teetering reddish, uh, but I'm not too worried about it for now. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the S&P SPX and uh, for one week candles. So each candle represents one week for the big picture. But first, let's talk about risk appetite. So last week felt bearish, but it wasn't. The goal last week was to just hold progress and we did. That was a whole week. Uh, kind of a mirror image of the week before that. I mean, a, a copycat of the week before that, which is fine. We're trying to consolidate to uh, confirm the breakout more on that in a minute. Let's go back to risk appetite. So this week we might have emotional drivers. Uh, we have the GDP update. We have the Fed minutes, which mean nothing to me because they happened three weeks ago and they've already told us everything they want to tell us. They've had a thousand uh, speeches including some this week still and we have some earnings uh, so the emotional drivers are the gdp pce also thursday friday i think which are inflation data so those are emotional plus it's a short week so it might uh, it might bring some drama from that but i do believe that nvidia reports soon and that would be an actual driver mathematical driver so if nvidia's reaction not the report the reaction to nvidia's earnings is bad it could drop us to get that dip that we need um, that we could use i should say to get a better head of steam to tackle the the breakout the recent failure on the spx it's around 42 4202 uh, the recent fail from just last month so basically we want to confirm the february breakout and make a higher high all right so let's talk about how we got here and see why this is important so again the goal this week is to do basically what we did next last week um teeter back and forth have scary but come out of it okay and then eventually we want in the next 10 days or so make a higher high above 4200 that line right there so three weeks back's high okay so how did we get here we had in 2018 we had a crash in the market that ended in the christmas crash of 2018 that was the Powell crash because he was raising rates. And then he finally said, okay, 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 I will cut rates. And he started a new QE. And then COVID hit, we recovered, and we went to the moon. We shouldn't have. And then we'd been falling for over a year from the 2021 highs. And notice, here's what's different this time. We have had a correction. We bounced hard. This was, um, what's his name? I think this was, anyway, we had the ukraine war here and we had i forget his name now one of the fed heads um did like freak people out with how many rate hikes he wanted to do and then we had a um, a pretty big bounce and then the bounce failed and made a new low that's the important point we made a new low and then we had the june crash and then we have a pretty big bounce and then the bounce failed and we made a new low in october and then we had a bounce and then the bounce failed but this time it's different because we have gone back up and made a higher high. So this is where the bear, the bulls have some momentum. And this is the argument to this time it's different. So I am bullishly optimistic. I mean, I, I am optimistic, but cautiously so in the next six months. I want this three months at least. I want to see a new set of reports, especially from Amazon. Okay, so what about risk appetite? It's pretty healthy. I'll give you a couple of things. Overseas, um, someone reminded me or pointed it out that the CAC 40 make, made a new high. That's the French market. Uh, thank you, Arlenis, for that. I haven't looked at it, but I'm pretty sure it's correct. So if that's the case, then risk appetite is healthy. The more tangible thing for me is I was trading crypto this weekend off my phone, 
and, and crypto coins are going through the roof, even the risky ones. So risk appetite out there is healthy. So if they want to buy the market up, they can. Don't be stubbornly bearish. We're not blind bulls. We're not perma bulls, but we're more bullish from the price action. We have higher lows and maybe higher highs now. So to confirm it, let me put my lines on there. So again, this is the SPX one week. I'm going to quickly switch to one day. Switching to one day with the lines, it will be a tangible number that we can look at. So basically, we're trading between 4,200, which was the last fail, and a bunch of buyers. So even if we drop like 5-6% into 3890 or so, I would buy that dip for a bigger swing because that would still be higher low trend trying to take out a prior fail. Now if we take out that 4200 on the SPX, um, that would be confirmation of the breakout, which may have already happened, but they're trying to come back and touch base. The, the small caps have already done that. Um, so target one and target two, those are my targets. The actual target of this pattern is much higher probably goes to here but let's be realistic uh, baby steps first all I want is to confirm that higher low higher high trend that maybe we're starting maybe we are not so that's what I'm looking for are we starting to buy dips that's one two three this is this it or how deep will it go so this one stopped halfway if this one stops halfway halfway of what from here to here dropped from here to here dropped uh, we would be actually confirming this ascending channel. So that would be the good news. Okay, so the QQQ, watch it because it's going to be dependent on what the chips do in sympathy to NVIDIA. So be careful if I'm long AMD and such, SMH and things like that. So again, let's recap. We have some emotional drivers. We can c control our emotions by looking at the nitty-gritty of lines and numbers. I mean, these are facts. There's no interpretation. These are machines. That's what they do. And if we're interpreting the machine actions correctly, they are buying dips. And if that's the case, we should make higher highs after on every dip. Uh, so I am in the mode of buying dips. I'm going to be looking to buy dips in individual stocks that fall into support, hopefully on some earnings reaction that I disagree with, um, and um, buying dips into the indices. So if this week the indices fall apart, I'll pick my entry point, I'll share it, and I'll say I'm taking longs via this or that. All right, so this is it as far as strategy. Now, every day before the market opens, I'm going to share my opinions to vary that strategy based on what happens between now and Friday. Stay safe out there. All right, folks, and that was basically just one of these strategic videos that he does per week, but the live session is obviously, it's not open right now because it's open from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m., and that's where Nick is sharing his screen, webinar style, where you can ask him questions, private message him, work on strategies, ask for feedback, basically get coaching and mentoring from Nick Shaheen directly. So I've gotten some emails here, Mr. Martin, Mr. Barry, uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, Dan Martin, I see your email there. So folks, if you do have any questions, I did leave the contact in the chat. I do want to appreciate everybody here. Thank you for being here, participating. It was a great session. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was pretty interesting here, all the things that we talk about with Nick. And if you think, you know, these two hours were pretty good with Nick, then imagine being with him Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. live the entire day, right? So you also have Sunday sessions from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's Eastern, where he reviews about 150 to 200 stocks. That's actually this video here. Let me pull it up. Sunday charts. So there's three videos total, right? And you guys pick the tickers. As you can see, it says, give me the tickers here. You click this form. And if you want to join the live call, you click on this link. So there's a lot of live interaction here to help people with custom strategies and trades. So thanks a lot, folks. Appreciate everybody here. And we'll see you guys in the chat room tomorrow.